it's been a week since the Secret Service announced it is closing the investigation into the baggie of cocaine found at the White House. It's a story that the right-leaning media has been completely obsessed with and a story that the left-leaning media has basically ignored. So rather than downplay it or overhype it, like those the partisan media do, we want to assess once and for all whether this is a massive story that got underplayed or a small story that got overhyped or maybe as is most likely somewhere in between, as tends to be the case. Last Thursday, the Secret Service announced they were closing the book on it. Quote, there was no surveillance video footage found that provided investigative leads or any other means for investigators to identify who may have deposited the found substance in this area. Without physical evidence, the investigation will not be able to single out a person of interest from the hundreds of individuals who passed through the vestibule where the cocaine was discovered. At this time, the Secret Service's investigation is closed due to a lack of physical evidence. That explanation satisfied the left-leaning media. The White House cocaine has been mentioned only five times combined on MSNBC and CNN since Friday morning. One of those was a passing mention and a soundbite from a Republican senator who was talking about something else. In the same span on Fox News, 258 mentions. Every day on almost every show, the White House cocaine is a topic of discussion. And watching them and other right-leaning media, you would think it's sort of the scandal of the century. If it was my cocaine or if it was your cocaine, not that we do cocaine, we'd be in jail. But since it's the White House's cocaine, all they have is a 500-person suspect list that they refuse to narrow down. I can't get a bottle of Poland Spring onto a Delta flight. And you're telling me you can get a bag of cocaine into the most secured location in the White House? Bags of cocaine that the Secret Service can't identify the ownership of? Oh, yeah, just how degenerate are they? No surveillance footage, no DNA, no fingerprints, no nothing, and not even a laptop computer documenting the crime with text, emails, and video. I have to say, I find all of that entertaining, by the way. I'm smiling as I'm listening to all of them. Sean Hannity even brought up the cocaine during his town hall interview last night with former President Trump. They had a 10-day investigation. They have cameras on every single person that walked into that area. That's right. They didn't interview a single person, and after 10 days, they declared the investigation is over. We don't know who did it. I think Secret Service would be able to tell you the real answer, but you can't have a thing like that. The most embarrassing thing for our country. So there you have the two extremes in the partisan media. I just want to know how the heck cocaine got in the White House, but maybe there is no way to know. I'm not accusing the White House or the Secret Service of anything, but it's a legitimate question that we can ask of someone who knows much more than I do. Evie Pomporis is a former Secret Service agent, spent 12 years working on complex investigations, was an interrogator for the Secret Service's elite polygraph unit. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So what do you make of the Secret Service's statement? Does it ring true? Yes. So essentially what they're saying is that at the security checkpoints, their focus is, Dan, weapons, chemical biological agents, and anything radioactive. It's a security checkpoint. Now, they, they deal with having a small baggie of cocaine. The magnetometers and security is not set up to find something so small. Could you find it in somebody's bag? In the past, actually, Secret Service said last year that there were two instances that they actually found marijuana on two individuals coming into the White House. My sources tell me that that was from inside the checkpoint when they opened up the individual's bag. This situation here, we're talking about a small bag, and it was very likely on the person. And so unless you're really doing a strip search of people or you have the proper canine or um, dogs to do that type of check for every single person, you're not going to be able to detect that. But, but is it true that there wouldn't be surveillance video? I mean, that's the part that I think a lot of people are distrustful of, this idea that there wasn't or wouldn't be a way to get any kind of surveillance footage that could help answer the question. So here's the issue. The surveillance is very sophisticated outside of the White House, but the area where the cocaine was found, there's an actual cubicle at that entry point, and around that entry point, there are sensitive rooms where a lot of classified information is discussed. So in that area, you're not going to have those types of cameras. You have to understand, within the White House, it's a secure place. Intelligence people are moving around, people that should not be on camera, conversations that should not be heard. So that does make sense because exactly where that cocaine was found, and again, it was found in a cubbyhole. So it means the person came in, they were likely a guest, likely because 
only you, you only do that with guests. They take their phone out, likely, put it in the cubicle. With that, their bag of cocaine, their small bag. And that's typically what the situation looks like in that environment. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.